Hey everyone, this is Patrick, producer of the LGBT Outdoors podcast, and just want to give you a little fair warning that we do discuss the topic of suicide in this upcoming episode. If you or someone you know is struggling with these thoughts, you can call or text 988 to reach the National Suicide Hotline or reach out to The Trevor Project at thetrevorproject.org. What do you do when you come out as LGBTQ and love the outdoors? What do you do when you see the outdoor space ruled by older white cis men and desire a diverse community of outdoor lovers? Accept it, change it, create it. I am Justin Yoder, and this is LGBT Outdoors. What's up, everyone? This is Justin, and we have a very special episode of the LGBT Outdoors podcast for you this week. Um, I am going to just jump right in and introduce everybody to you because we have the entire board of directors of LGBT Outdoors on the podcast today. We have Patrick Thompson. Hey, everybody. Mallory Hall. Hi. JC Rienton. Whoop, whoop. And Roscoe Compton Kelly. Hey, hey. So uh, what we are doing is we are celebrating um, National Coming Out Day, even though this is the Monday after that. And uh, we decided that we wanted you to get to know our board of directors a little bit better. And we thought, what better way to do that than to share our coming out stories? So we are going to do that. But before we dive into that, we also had the first LGBT Outdoor Fest that the entire board was able to make it to as well. And it was incredible. So thanks mm. for coming to that, guys. That was so Woo-hoo. fun. It oh, was. It was it. a blast. Finally. I'm just going to call myself <laughs> out. I'm the one that didn't make it, y'all. That's it. That was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't naming anybody, but I mean, if you're going to throw it out there. <laughs> I'm um, counting down to the next one already. Yes, I, mm. that weekend is so fun. I, it's one of those rare chances we all get to be in the same room, um, same campground, same everything. Um, it was just so much fun to to get to hang with all you guys that for that weekend. I agree. I agree. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun. So we are working on plans for the next one uh, for next September, hopefully in Colorado. In September, hopefully, we're working on the details. We'll let everybody know. Stay tuned. Um, but we are. Uh, Patrick is also going to be doing a podcast from LGBT Outdoor Fest. So, in the near future, you're going to be getting an inside look to what that is like through a podcast episode as well. Um, so we don't want to give too much away. But does any of you have something special that might have happened, or cool takeaway, or anything that happened at LGBT Outdoor Fest you'd like to share? Um, I'll start. Uh, I think, you know what, for me, my first, compared to like the first outdoor fest I went to, um, when I only knew a, f- a few and met a lot of new friends, this time it felt more like a reunion. Um, mm. cause it's just so many, um, people that I've come to know over the last few years that I don't really get to see that often, but, but yet like we, we talk a lot over the phone or by email and you know that that made it worth the drive the long drive from Colorado to Texas just to spend time some really good quality time with with everyone uh, which again doesn't happen often because again we're we're all over the country and you know we had so many ambassadors that that um, came from New Mexico uh, Louisiana and it was just it was just a great experience. So it for me it felt more like like a reunion, um, which is always fun. Coming home. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Uh I'll go next. Ross- oh yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry. Um I will just say <laughs> that this was my third time doing archery things. And I always look forward to it so much. Uh but I made some really cool shots and I was really proud of it. And now it's kind of inspired me to want to maybe like buy a bow and do more yes. with that because it's just so much awesome. fun. Yeah. 
I love that. We can go shooting together. Okay. Do it. Awesome. Like you should see Justin shoot, especially with his compound bow. I mean, it is ridiculous. Full on Katniss Everdeen, like, <laughs> like, wow. no mess. No, it's like he took me. Like we went to the archery range for a date night, which was like super cool. Um, and like he actually he hit a bullseye, and then he hit that same arrow that he just shot. Heck yeah. Like just so precise. Nice. It's insane. I mean, it sounds cool, but I ruined my arrow, so. I mean, cool, it's worth cool. it? <laughs> yes. Uh, they're not cheap, but maybe. <laughs> okay. but no, that's fun. Well, you know, Rosco, I this was your you first and, one. I know. I know it was my first one. Finally, after, you know, two billion years, I finally get to make it down. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I emailed you about this, uh, afterwards and the rest of the board hadn't got to hear this story, but, um, just, it was so, so nice to be able to get away. And, um, you know, I'm always just on the run, on the go doing a billion things and to actually take a moment to to stop and reset was really cool. But then to get to do all the things that I loved doing that I hadn't done in a while, um, like going to kayak, even though it was on that little pond because everything else was so dry. But uh, <laughs> it just reminded me, I'm like, dang, I miss my kayak. I want to go back out kayaking again. So um, actually uh, working on once all of the move is settled, getting the kayak and getting my hybrid bike and getting back out in the trails again. So and hopefully my rollerblades are packed somewhere in a box um, that I can find and use those again, too. So we'll see. <laughs> Love it. Love that. Yeah. I got a message today from um one of the guys that was there and he was like, Me and my new outdoor friends, LGBT outdoor fest friends, went on a hike together today or last mm. weekend, I guess it was. I was like, Oh, yeah. that's yes. what it's all about. It was so cool. Mm-hmm. Patrick, did you have anything you wanted to share about it? I've had many, many, many thoughts and um you will hear all about them in the upcoming <laughs> episode of the LGBT Outdoors podcast. Um, I mean, realistically for me um, I, I, and Justin both, like, and, and so many people, like we're running around and, and we're working hard to, to make everything happen. And um, so we don't often get to be like in it, in it and, and um, lot, like, really experiencing it as everyone else is and should. Um, but we get our own takeaways. Like we've gotten a handful of messages afterward um, that are just like goosebump. It like all tingly and stuff um, about like people, uh, you know, it, who are struggling in life and outdoor fest was like the one thing that kept them going and like the payoff uh, was amazing and they loved it and it helped them, um, you know, just really look forward to the future. And they're already planning on going to the next one. Um, like people who are like introverts and shy and how they're able to like come in and feel comfortable and safe and welcome. When we get all th- those messages, it- it's just confirmation that like we're on the right track and that this is this is more than just like, you know, a, a cool camping weekend where you get to try stuff out. Like there's this sort of outdoor fest magic that happens every time um, that we don't plan. We don't facilitate. It just sort of exists because our community is awesome. Um, and, and so I guess that's kind of my takeaway is that like we sort of, you know, build the box but the personalities and spirit and life that everybody brings like adds all this magic that we could have never dreamt up. And yeah. it's, it's something really, really special. Agreed. Agreed. That's all awesome. I can't wait for that episode to come out. I am. I'm excited to see uh, what you're going to do with it. So that'd be fun. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted to touch also on before we jump into our stories, um, our local chapters have been growing insane in a good way. It's just been absolutely mind blowing. And, um, 
was just getting ready to post about all of the events that we have coming up over October, November, December, and there's going to be more added, but we currently have 23 events across the U S that are on the calendar. Um, Wow. Wow. Currently we have events that are happening in Michigan, New Hampshire, Louisiana, Nevada, Arizona, Illinois, Colorado, Texas, New Mexico, Washington, and Maryland. And there's going to be more that's going to be added to that soon. So if you didn't hear your state, it's possible that it's going to be added soon. And these events are led by our ambassadors who dedicate a year to us and their communities to be able to get their community active and outside in new uh, new outdoor experiences um, and just building community together. Um, So if you're interested in being an ambassador, go to our website, um, LGBT Outdoors, and uh, click on um, Become an Ambassador, and you can learn about it. But check it out. Hopefully, you can get plugged in. And um, with that, are we ready to share our coming out stories? Yeah. I want to hear all of y'all. I'm excited. I, I'm excited too. I'm trying to like I'm trying to remember who all's I've heard before. Um I know that I've shared parts of mine on the podcast before, so um but I got voted to start it off, so we oh, we, we will divide <laughs> we will dive into it. Um have have you all heard my coming out story? Yes. Obviously, Patrick had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks, babe. Glad you, glad you paid thanks, attention. Thanks, honey. Appreciate that. <laughs> love you. I love you. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think um, how far back to go. <laughs> Way back when I was born. No. I came out of my mother's womb. No. Um, and all seriousness, though, like, I, I, live obviously in in north texas now but grew up in missouri on my grandparents farm um and we were pretty much the typical stereotype rural american family mom dad three kids um we were in church from the day that i was born um there was no such thing as a snow day because my grandpa being the man that he would if there was snow and one time there was snow that went where you could just see about, I don't know, five or six inches of the top of the fence post. He, uh, he would get up super, super early with his tractor and plow the road all the way from our farm to the church. So (laughs) there, there was no such thing as a snow day for us, (laughs) nor our neighbors, which I don't know if they were glad about or not glad about, but, uh, but we all were all there. (laughs) Um, and, uh, my dad was raised Amish, and my mom was raised Mennonite. They're still Mennonite. Um, that's a whole other story, but it's not the same as being Amish. So they drive vehicles and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think that I knew that I was gay from the time, man, I don't know, seven, eight years old, probably. I mean, yeah, you growing up on the farm you might not know a lot of things but when there's a lot of farm animals around you (laughs) yeah it teaches you uh it teaches you a few things (laughs) um but um about the quote-unquote birds and the bees um and i don't know i just knew i knew that i was different and um knew that really girls weren't my thing but at the same time i um I knew that I couldn't share who I was really and and be okay with who I was because we also learned in church, like gay people are going to hell. Um, I remember being taught in Sunday school, probably in second or third grade about Sodom and Gomorrah and how evil gay people are and everything. So that was nothing that I was ever going to share with people. Um, Child friendly programming right there. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Very much so. Um, and so later on in life, um, I uh, got real involved with Africa. My two bi- biggest passions in life had been Africa and photography since I was a little kid. 
um, after my first trip to Africa in 2021, I knew that I wanted to be doing a lot more in Africa. So I started another nonprofit at that time called Project Africa. And we were doing a lot of AIDS and HIV relief work with orphans in South Africa, Swaziland, Botswana, and Tanzania. And it was a few years after starting that that I got into a relationship with a girl. We ended up getting married. Um, and um, <laughs> that didn't last very long. Um, she ended up, man. Yeah, I guess we're sharing our stories here, aren't we? <laughs> like, I'm like, you won't get that personal. is why we are here, sir. <laughs> how, 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 how deep do we want to go with this? Um, before proposing, um, she did know that being gay was something that I, air quotes, struggled with. But she went ahead and uh, when I did propose, said yes and married me anyways. So then when she wanted out of the marriage, um, because she got involved with somebody at her work, then she ended up telling my family, her family, and all of our friends that I had a, an affair with a guy, um, which wasn't true. Um, but at that point, I, I was out. I mean, <laughs> um, there was no really coming out for me. I just kind of got thrown out. And uh, it was very, very difficult. Um because at that point, everybody, again, believed her. There was no convincing them. Otherwise, I was the guy, so I was the bad guy in, in the story. Later, they realized the big picture because she worked for a Christian college in Dallas at the time. Her relationship with the coworker came into light, and they were, um, I don't know, they were given the choice to either um, resign or be fired. And so I'm not sure exactly what happened with that situation, but... Um, at that point, they realized that there was a lot more to the story than what she had originally been telling them. Um, but she was from El Salvador. She actually got deported back to El Salvador. I was stuck with all of our bills, all of our car bills, everything. Um, on top of that, um, the board, because of who I was then and everything, the board for Project Africa um, basically took LGBT. Uh, took LGBT out. <laughs> that wasn't a thing yet. Uh, the board basically took uh, Project Africa away from me and shut it down because they didn't think that I was fit to be working with kids and, and running a nonprofit like that. So now I had no job. I had double the bills. Um, she had the lock changed on our apartment, so I didn't have a place to live. Um, and li life was just dandy. I mean, <laughs> to say the least. Um I lived with a friend for a little while um, and then ended up um, moving into another apartment when I got a job with Chipotle um, and worked my way up in management there. But it wasn't enough to pay the bills and um, and life just kept getting harder and harder. Um, ended up even having the car repoed at one point and uh, wasn't sure how I was going to get out of this situation, especially when... Um, family didn't seem to want much to do with me. Friends didn't want much to do with me. Um, but it was during this time that I did start, I guess, exploring myself a little bit more. I was like, okay, if, if everybody thinks that I'm gay and knows that I'm gay, then I might as well like start to try to figure this out, I guess. And made some gay friends at this time and, um, tried to, I guess started the beginning steps of trying to understand how to get my head and my heart to connect, but it wasn't working. Um, and then I also met Patrick during this time. Um, and <laughs> everybody's smiling for those of you that can't see, cause you're listening right now, but, um, met Patrick during this time. Um, still wasn't like really out um, still not really accepting that it, who this was who I was. And after a couple of conversations with more with my, my mom particularly, and, and just realizing where I was at in life, I wanted out of life. I was done. Um, and so I remember very clearly where I was sitting, um, in my condo and North Dallas. And I was like, this is it. It all ends tonight. I cannot do life anymore. 
And right at that moment, Patrick texts me and said, hey, do you want to go on a date with me? And I think this was before LOL was a thing, but I literally laughed out loud and was like, (laughs) hell no, I do not want to go on a date with you. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not out. Like, I'm not accepting that I am gay at this point. Um, And we went back and forth a little bit and he was like, well, what if we just hang out as friends? And he, uh, he convinced me that way. And, uh. In all reality, I was kind of hoping that it was going to be that night and um, I could get to spend, you know, one more night with him and then and then check out. Um, and he was like, well, how about it? I think I'm trying to remember, I think it was a Sunday night and then we planned to meet on Wednesday. And I was like, dang it, three days. You're going to keep me on this earth three more days to spend time with you. And I was like, fine, fine, I'll do it. Um. So I ended up pulling up to his his uh, apartment in Dallas. I, I don't. You guys are gonna make fun of me for this. I don't even know who this singer is, and I feel as a gay person, I'm really supposed to maybe. Um, <laughs> there's a song. Patrick shaking his head already. Oh, there's a song that the chorus goes. Um, um, Sing it, honey. Like an, no, I'm not singing. Um, no, just what like are the <laughs> You can, you can see it. Um, like an airplane in the night sky could really use a wish right now. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it Rihanna? Airplanes in the night sky, like like shooting stars, could really use a wish right now. Yeah. I have a mental yeah. block with I forget. artist names. So. Oh, can we pretend like airplanes in the night sky? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that song. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that was a song that was playing when I pulled up and I turned turned my car off in, in uh, his parking lot. And, uh, you know, my faith is pretty important to me. And it still is. It has evolved a lot from what it was. But um, I was just like, God, I don't know about wishes, but I could I could really use some answered prayers. And so we went on this date. And, you know, like out of all of the places in Dallas, (laughs) because there's a lot that you could take somebody on a first date. We end up going to Bachman Lake at the end of the runway at um, Love Field Airport, where airplanes flew over our head as we had a picnic. And I was just like, the connection between that song and, and that just like... Uh, signs. I've heard this before, but I still got goosebumps right now. So, <laughs> um, and so, uh, so we had our first date there, and you know how you typically, you typically try to put your best foot forward <laughs> on a date, <laughs> and you just wanna, you just wanna impress this person, and you keep all your dark secrets to yourself, and. All of this. Well, that didn't happen. We <laughs> spilled everything. And I was like, there's no way there's going to be a second date. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Did we have a bunch of, <laughs> we, had a, we had a lot of crap. We had a lot yep. of crap. And um, I just, yeah, you know, I was, I was checking out a life. So I didn't think there was going to be a second date at all. Um, and then after that, after the date and we went back to his apartment and was saying goodnight. And he, we talked and he was like, so we're we going to have a second date or something like that. And for some reason I agreed. And here we are just, that was just over 13 years ago. <laughs> um, my, as far as coming out has really been um, an evolving piece of me because uh I th- I thought that over time, or I guess I hoped over time, my parents would come around and my family would come around. Um, I finally got my head and my heart to align with 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 my faith, and um, I've so, I've never been happier in my life than I am now. But I really was hoping that over time my parents would come around and be able to come to our wedding. Um, they didn't. They haven't. To this day, they still haven't met Patrick. But my older and younger brother and their families have met him and accepted him as family. And that is incredible. So we get to go up to Missouri and he's got a 
whole bunch of nieces and nephews up there and um, <laughs> loves having pillow fights with them and causing trouble and stuff. <laughs> so, so while my relationship with my parents is, is not a good one, um, my family, my chosen family, my, my brothers, um, the LGBT outdoors family that we've created has made everything worth it. And I am just really excited for where I'm at in life and where things are going with LGBT outdoors and um, hoping to be able to make a little bit of difference in this world. So I think that's my coming out story. I love it. Did I keep it under 10 minutes? I doubt it. It's okay. It's worth it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Also, can I just just say real quick, that doesn't happen for anybody. You're like, okay, cool. Um, Life is terrible. All the things. Okay, I'm going to meet Prince Charming, and he's going to show up, and this song's going to magically come on, and then there's going to be airplanes, (laughs) and now we're... (laughs) 13 years later i'm so happy like it didn't happen for you but dang it justin that's exciting like i know i know i i um i yeah i don't have words for that because yeah it's tough it's tough dating in general but it's especially i think tough dating in the lgbtq community um so i i realize how grateful and amazing it's it's been for me um for sure yeah no i don't take it for granted that's that's for sure um he had to put up a lot with me for a while though like, uh-huh still does <laughs> still, still does <laughs> i knew that was coming <laughs> uh, i mean i i love justin i love hearing your story because I, I know it ties into like the nonprofit work you did before to lgbt outdoors which we know is a nonprofit. And how it kind of comes full circle of how that was where, you know, relatively speaking, like that was kind of like rock bottom for you. And yeah. now you're at this level with with LGBT outdoors and how that's thriving like to the present day and just continues to grow. So I feel like that part of the story, it's just like continuing to develop. So I love that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I kind of talked about it at Outdoor Fest, but everybody wasn't there. But I was kind of sharing with the main group the first night about how we get to be the authors of our story. And I think that that's one of the big things that I've been re- uh, reflecting on recently is just that we have the ability to control our stories while we don't always get to choose the storyline or the, or the topic that gets thrown at us, we are still the authors and get to choose how we react to those things and what we do with those things. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, make it the best life you can. I know it's, it's tough sometimes, but life can be great. And it gets better for anybody that is going through crap out there right now. It gets better. It's colorful, honey, really colorful. (laughs) I think it's really colorful, yes. <laughs> it does. Take your indoors, outdoors, or spacious guys' campgrounds, a collection of 15 campgrounds and RV parks spanning the eastern United States. Each location is unique, but all offer the perfect escape to the great outdoors if you're looking to spend quality time with your friends and family or simply need a scenic home base for your nearby adventures. Choose from RV sites, cabins, yurts, retro RV rentals, or tent sites, and enjoy on-site amenities that offer convenience, creature comforts, and fun. Visit SpaciousSkiesCampgrounds.com for more information and easy online booking. We welcome and invite all campers to camp on with Spacious Skies Campgrounds. All right, are we ready to jump to Roscoe? Yes. Roscoe. Are you sure about this? <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> well, I don't get any fancy airplane picnics by the airport. That, yeah. So. Well, <laughs> we can talk to Brian about that. <laughs> well, he's number two. So. 
don't know how he killed him on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, my story starts many, many moons ago. Back in prehistoric AD. <laughs> <laughs> When I was a wee little lad of 17, no, so uh, I, well, most of you guys know this, that I grew up in Beaumont, um, so about 80 miles northeast of Houston, and, uh, you know, I was a pretty active kid all the way through um, high school. Um, when I tell you I did all the things, I literally did all the things. So I, um, by the time I got into high school, let's see. I was doing golf. I'd done track. I'd done basketball. Um, was on the yearbook team. Had just was in the process of getting my Eagle Scout that year. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of, of the other school stuff that I was doing. Uh, there was just a ton. And then was raised Catholic all throughout my childhood. Um, and so had been altar boy. Um, had done all the sacrament stuff and was on our diocesan youth board, which basically covers um, quite a bit of the Beaumont, Southeast Texas area. And so I just was really, really active doing a lot of stuff things, um, really participating a lot in just different community activities. And um, I had met a guy. Um, so this would have been, I'd have been 17 at that time. Um, he was a couple years older than I was. And, uh, you know, we started talking and this was back in the day when you had AOL, right? You know, mm-hmm. um, Aim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you had that, had that little, you know, sound that, whatever that noise was, you had the log <laughs> in. We all they call that dial up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. And so, um, yeah, so we had been talking, uh, started dating and, uh, the coming out was really just kind of a random case of events. I guess I would say we were at the mall of all places and we were just walking, talking like we weren't holding hands or anything. Like we're just sitting there talking. First of all, I would have never held hands in the middle of a mall in public anywhere, much less the mall, um, knowing friends and stuff were there. And my best friend actually was working at the uh, jewelry booth. You know, everybody's got that jewelry booth at the mall, right? That like sits in the middle mm-hmm. of the mall and you get that, you know, 1995 silver jewelry. Uh, was it a kiosk the, or was it an actual yeah. store? No, well, it was a little kiosk. It was a little kiosk. Okay. Like okay. A, Those things mall. were life. Yeah. Yeah. It's like okay. you know, old store places. Come on, nostalgia. Um, <laughs> so we uh, walked past, talked to her for a little bit. And while we were talking to her, one of my other friends from high school was standing there and saw us walking through the mall. And so she called me a little bit later that day and she said, Hey, I have a question for you. And I was like, yeah, what is it? And she's like, are you gay? And it was in that moment where I made this very conscious decision just to live in my truth and all throughout childhood and, and, you know, even going into high school, I knew there was something different. I always had recognized there was something different. I could never put a name to what that difference was. But, you know, this is also during the time where Don't Act, Don't Tell came out, um, Gays in the Military, you know, all of those things were happening during that time frame. And so there was a lot that I think I had been thinking through processing on my own that, you know, I was like, well, is this what that could be? Is that I am gay? These feelings that I'm having, is that what that is? So when my friend asked me this question, I really made a critical decision at that point and it was to tell her yes. And so I said, yeah, I am. And so we talked for a little bit and she was like, okay, well, that's cool. Like, you know, I'm glad you told me and, uh, you know, nothing's going to change between us and, you know, we'll talk, you know, at school the next day. And I was like, okay. And I hung up the phone and I immediately started bawling uh, Mm because that was the first person I'd ever told. And then I knew that, I had to tell my parents because, uh, you know, words out now. And as much as I'm like, like, you know, my friends, I'm like, that's a gossipy brunch and and a bunch and almost not that small. Right. So, uh, you know, I've got, got potential for somebody to find out. So I remember my mom got home from school. She was a school teacher and she pulled into the driveway and I've been pacing back and forth in the house thinking, how am I going to tell her? What am I going to say to her? And so, I um, ran outside to meet her at the car <laughs> and she's getting her bags and stuff out of my mama. I need to tell you something. It's real important. Um, and you need to come in the house right now. 
oh, baby, let me just get my stuff out the car. Like, it's fine. Like, hold on. I'm like, no, no, no. You're probably going to need to leave. So just leave your stuff in the car and come inside and, like, come talk and sit down. So we sat down. And uh, I, <laughs> I'm i not quite sure which one she was more upset about. The fact that I was gay or the fact that I was dating a white guy. Still to this day, I don't know if I've ever gotten the clarity on that. <laughs> but I remember saying to her, hey, you remember that guy I've been hanging out with where he and I are dating? And what was interesting about this whole thing is that probably two weeks prior to that, my parent, my mom and I had, had this conversation about if I were to ever come out. And she was like, oh, you know what? You know, I love you. Like, you know, it'll be fine. It won't be a big deal. Um, you know, I'll, I'll always be caring. Well, that was a complete opposite reaction from what I received that day. She lost her crap um, and was like, I don't know what's wrong with you. And this is not right. And you are not going to do that. And you're not going to date this guy. And you're going to be on lockdown in the house. And mind you, they raised a very, very, very like stubborn and very independent child. So <laughs> them telling me that I was going to do anything opposite or contrary to what I wanted to do was not going to happen. And I was like, uh, screw you. You're not doing anything to me and I will do what I want to do. So <laughs> this is what it's going to be. And you just go deal. So there was a big argument. That led to basically us not telling my dad. That was what we agreed upon. We agreed to disagree and just say, okay, we're not going to tell my dad. Um, probably about a month passed. And she and I like were really close. So this was like rough on the two of us. Because, you know, we had always been super close. I was the oldest. And we just constantly like were fighting about each other with about little crazy things. I mean, it would just... Anything that popped up, we got into a fight about it. Well, so my how my dad found out was that I was chatting with my boyfriend at the time on AOL. And we had a conversation that printed out on the printer. I still to this day do not know how this happened, but it printed off in the printer. And it flew off the printer and it landed down on his side of the bed. Because that was where the computer was at the time. And what it got covered up by a bunch of books. What are the odds? What are the odds? Oh, well, what are the <sighs> odds? So a few weeks later, um, he's taking me to school, which was, again, a rare day. Like, it was rare that he took me to school. And usually he was at work really early, and my mom took me. And I hear them arguing in the bedroom. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, why are they arguing? Seven o'clock in the morning. And I walk past their door because I'm being nosy, just trying to see what they're arguing about. And I hear my mom <laughs> scream, so what if he is gay? And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I go running oh. back into my room. And I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And it's crazy hair day. So let me like give you this picture. It's crazy hair day at school. I have grabbed one of my mom's old wigs and I've teased up this massive like Afro thing. And I'm literally pacing back and forth in my room going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> and my dad opens the door and he's like, son, are you? And literally stops mid sentence. Because <laughs> all he sees is the back of this Afro, right? <laughs> <laughs> <It's my next laughs> <turn. laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. Already, and so that was like the <laughs> longest five minute car ride to high school I have ever had in my life. And my dad, like, I knew he wanted to try to broach the subject, and he was just like, So, do you have anything to tell me? And I was like, Nope, and I jumped out the car and ran inside the school. <laughs> <laughs> From that day, my dad actually did not speak to me for probably a good three months. Like, would not say a word to me. We'd be at the kitchen table or at the dining room table, and like right across from each other. And he would turn to my mom and he would say, can you hand Craig? They called me by my middle name because my dad's name is Roscoe too. So they would say, can you hand Craig uh, this plate? Like, and I'm standing right there, but like would not speak to me at all. Um, it wasn't until the summer after I graduated and well, I say after I graduated, but it was, it was the summertime. And I, um, so this was my junior year. So I was going into my senior year. So I, I, um, was in summertime and I had been elected back to the youth board for the diocese again. And I had got my Eagle Scout as well too. And around that time was when my mom and I kind of like reconciled because she was like, Oh, my baby's so wonderful. He got his Eagle Scout and I love him. And she made this big, huge speech and it was really sweet. So, uh, when I got reelected, well, I was on my camp out for eagle scout where you do the order of the arrows the next step after you mm -hmm. got the eagle scout and so i went out to the camp and so i got elected and i wasn't there 
So my dad had to come and get me to bring me back for this election. Yeah, you know, y'all can tell it's this theme here that I'm always busy and doing stuff, right? Multiple things at the same time. <laughs> so my dad drives out to get me, and it's about a two-hour ride back from the campground back to where you know the the election and everything's taking place. And so we actually start talking while we're in the car, and he gets back, and I go up. We do the election stuff. Um, I get back down off of the stage and I'm walking up to him in the hallway and he's got tears in his eyes and he's like, I'm really, really proud of you. And that was that moment that like the reconciliation started happening. Um, fast, you know, forward to now and we probably have the best relationship that the three of us have ever had. I talk to them probably every other day, you know, um, at least and then they'll call if they haven't heard from me, like what's going on. Um, they adore Brian. Um, they walked me down my, uh, down the aisle at the wedding. Um, which was a funny story because the only reason that that happened was because Brian was so anxious <laughs> and we had to get him down the aisle somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he did this justice. Like, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to go down the aisle. He did not want to walk down the middle. Brian of the aisle. did it? No, no. <laughs> he went, he went to come in like from the side and I was like, he was like, I don't want to be the center of attention. And I'm like, it's your wedding. Like, that's the whole point. <laughs> so anyway, so the only reason that they did that is because, like, we had to get Brian's parents to walk him down the aisle because it was the only way he was going to walk down the middle of the aisle. And so then, like, it became this whole thing. And I'm like, well, then they would have to walk. Both parents have to walk us down the aisle. So, But it was really, really, like, a wonderful moment to, like, come full circle and have me walk, have them walk me down the aisle uh, together like that. Um, and so, yeah, no, it's been, um, it was tough. It was tough. I will say that was a rough few months, um, coming out and I did not know a lot of things, a, um, that were in the background. One of those things being that my mom was really worried I was going to get sick and I really wasn't sure why. And it was because my uncle had been diagnosed with HIV, um, Mm -hmm. and not too long before I came out. And so she was just really afraid of what was going to happen to me. Um, you know, and for the African American community, like there were so many things from a, from a bias standpoint that they thought they knew and they didn't because I did not act that way or I didn't exhibit the sign that they anticipated. And so I think for them, it was even this, this reconciliation of who I was as a person versus what they had heard. Um, and then mm-hmm. meshing all of that together um, to come up with, okay, this is really the reality. Um, so it's been a big healing and learning journey for the both of us. And I am blessed that, you know, I had a situation that ended well. There's not a lot of kids that can say that, um, you know, and still have those types of relationship. I mean, Justin, you know that, um, and have that relationship with their parents. So I consider myself a very, very lucky individual in that aspect, knowing that there are hundreds of thousands of kids that do not have that same opportunity. So um, I will always be happy to share my story, um, you know, and it's one of the happy ending ultimately at the end of the day. Uh, but, uh, you know, it had as rough patches just like everybody else did. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, oh, Roscoe. Good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I love to... Um, bragging on your uh spouse for a second uh brian's mom um, oh my gosh with, with uh is it called mama bears yes yes so you know debbie is uh oh my god she is like an awesome mom in law like one of the best mom in laws that she could probably ever ask for um but she is a fierce fierce protector of her family and especially of brian um, and she's part of a group called the Mama Bears. Um, it was founded by Liz Dyer. Liz actually lives here in Dallas. Um, her son came out and, uh, she decided to form, um, this Mama Bears group. And so there's, uh, gosh, it's thousands of, of moms, um, that are there as protectors, as, you know, loudspeakers, as a safety net. Um, for so many kids, um, that are out there and, you know, you get to see them at the pride parades and, you know, at pride events, giving out hugs and resources and information. And if I tell you there's somebody that exhibits a mama bear, it's Debbie Kelly by far. She is (laughs) 
a fierce, fierce one that you do not want to cross when it comes to her babies. And she will protect them at any cost. And even seeing her evolution over the years has been pretty amazing. Uh, you know, and, and what she's uh, gleaned onto and stood up for, uh, which is really exciting. So I, yeah, very, cut myself very lucky to have her, have her in my court for sure. Oh, that's love awesome. It. That's I love super all cool. That. Yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. That's awesome. Of all right. So up next, we're going to have Mallory. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Mallory. Um, so love y'all's coming out stories. Thank you so much for sharing those. Um, uh, similar to Justin, um, I was once married to somebody of the opposite sex. Um, which is kind of my journey to finding out who I am as a person in a really cool way. Um, I'll start a little bit later or a little bit earlier, I guess, in my life. Um, so m- sex in general was a very strange thing for me. Um, I, it was not my choice to have it, um, in the beginning and, hmm. It was also um, a family member. So that is also difficult. And so I think in general, just how I viewed myself as a person and enjoying sex was not for me. Um, So I never ever questioned anything because my wants or needs were not ever in the forefront of anything. So I just went, okay, I want to be normal. Like legitimately just like, how do I be normal? Um, cut to me at, oh gosh, I was 19. I was bartending at a sushi restaurant and, um, I had two random roommates that I met off Craigslist, Josh and a deep, like <laughs> that's, I've always that just, doesn't sound sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> I've always just been that person that's just like, I don't know. What do I need? I need roommates. Great. Craigslist. Great. Awesome. Um, cut to, um, they were tearing down our apartment complex to build, build high rises, um, which was terrible. It was like $350 a month for this three bedroom, massive place. I had my own back entrance. It was perfect. Um, but they're tearing it down. So I had to find a new roommate at the time. I was really close friends with, um, this guy, Joel and his wife, Brittany and Joel and I would hang out all the time. He was in the super cool band. And, um, one night after a show, him and I are talking and I'm just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to find new roommates. And he's like, Hey, my brother is moving to Dallas. I'm like, okay, great. Does he need a roommate? And he's like, yes. It's like, okay, great. Like, can you give me his number? Do all the things. So, um, his name was Taylor. So Taylor and I, um, this is, I think before text messages or you had to pay per text. So called him, <laughs> Call, you know, so called him <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, and I remember telling, asking him if he was the Walmart version of Joel. I was like, Hey, like your brother and I are really good friends. Are you like the step down from him? Cause I could even do that. Because like, yeah, I was like, are you the great value version of Joel? Wow, if so- <laughs> <get seen. laughs> Store brand. Uh. Yeah, this is Mallory at nineteen, um, and he was kind of introverted and was just like, yeah, yeah, yes, I am. It's like, okay, great, okay. <laughs> so like, legitimately, him and I make plans to be roommates over the phone. And I'm like, okay, great. Like, send me money. I'm going to sign this lease. I had never met the guy. Um, and so he comes and moves in. And I'm like, hey, it's me and my dog. Hi, roommate. Um, ended up to be such great friends. And then all of a sudden, we were cuddling on the couch together. And I was like, what are we doing here? Um, we had an 11-year relationship. And he is one of my favorite humans to this day. Um, it is because of that human who showed me kindness and love and patience and everything I didn't know another human could show you that I actually like became more myself and to Mm. our relationship's detriment, 
a huge part of that was me finding my own sexuality that was for me and not for somebody else. And so like that was just the most empowering thing I'd ever experienced. And it was so difficult because I would have to let go of this incredible human that gave me the biggest gift um, in order to pursue who I knew I was. Um, so I'm so thankful to him. Um, and then I called, I called my mom and, um, she didn't know any of these things and I'm freaking out because I've been with this person for 11 years. It's such a huge part of my identity. Um, and also like loved the human so much, like had a blast best friend. Hmm. Um, and so I called my mom to tell her, um, and this was after, you know, I had been maybe seeing this lady for a little bit. Um, and I was like, so, you know, Taylor and I are splitting up and all the things and I'm, I'm seeing somebody and I'm walking a dog and my mom is on the other line. And she said, who is she? And I mm. am just flabbergasted because to my knowledge, my family or anybody close to me has no idea of any of this. Like I'm pretty female presenting, you know, feminine presenting. I don't give off these just like super gay vibes. Um, so that my mom was able to just ask me that question without any sort of leading whatsoever was really incredible. And like in a wow. weird way was justifying to me. It was like, okay, okay. Um, so that was a really cool, that was a really cool moment. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, so then I came out to friends. I think it was, it was hard for me to let go of this relationship and that part of my life, um, and open myself to all these new experiences, which were so scary. Um, but I would not be who I am today without doing that. And, um, so thankful to a really supportive family. And amazing friends, even though a few of them at the beginning just had all these stigmas. And they're like, does that mean you're going to cut your hair short? Because you have really pretty hair. I was like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> your hair um, looks really pretty. Also, I did just cut my hair really short. <laughs> <and it's laughs> <so dry>. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny. Um, thank you. Uh, but uh, I am, I'm super happy with who I am. I love being a part of this board and part of LGBT outdoors in general. And I would not get to experience any of these things if I wouldn't had so many incredible people in my life that supported me and loved me and for me, which is cool. Mm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We're glad you're you. Love it. Yes, we are. Love that. All right. So we're going to jump to JC. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Well, all this time that you guys have been sharing your story. I'm trying to think of like how far back I, I want to go. Cause I'm, I mean, in the past I've shared my story about how it, it ties into my love of the outdoors and finding self-acceptance there. But I, this time I'm going to take it way back, I think. Um, and you know, for me, uh, I don't talk about it a lot, but I, I, I love music. Um, I think something about the type of music I was listening to when I was young was kind of a, a big tell. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the Philippines and I have this childhood friend. His name was Casey. So we're like JC and Casey. And <laughs> we were both. Um, yeah. Yeah. We just kind of grew up together. Uh, we were neighbors. Um, and I remembered after school. Uh, we would just meet up and we would just listen to music. Um, we were best buds. We'd hike together. But then, you know, we would also like come home and, and throw on Celine Dion and like Tony Braxton, <laughs> Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. Um, and like our, you know, we would just blast to, to that kind of music and, um, 
we would try to make sure like no one was listening, but it was kind of like something that we shared and and when it would be like the remix version of like the ballads, we would just like dance to it. Um, so that was, you know, growing up, that was like one of my fondest memories. I didn't think there was really anything about that. Um, but I thought, you know, looking back at it now, I, that was a tell. I, I, I felt like that was a tell. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I moved to the United States uh, when I was like 11 and I, I felt like I had this weight on me that I was carrying. I didn't know what it was, um, but it was it. It kind of it. It was kind of like I, I was difficult to deal with growing up because I just was frustrated about something about myself that I didn't really understand. So I, I, not that I was troubled um, or anything like that as a teen. Um, but, you know, I went, I, I knew kind of like the future, what the future had in store for me was I, I was going to get married to a woman. I, I was going to find a girlfriend. I was going to get married to a woman, have kids, you know, all, all that stuff that society told me, like, that's what's in store in your future. Because, again, that's what you see in the media. That's what you see a lot of like your older uh, relatives do so. You kind of think like, oh, that's that's the future that's in store for me. Um, and then in high, in high school, you know, that's kind of like where you get to pick your after school activities. And, you know, I was in drama club, another tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I, again, like that just ties into my love of music. Um, so I, I, I was very active in like the theater Um and um like musicals um uh, i did that i was way more interested in that than like joining some sort of like active sports i'm just like football oh no like <laughs> <laughs> um, i'd watch but no <laughs> you dramatic never <laughs> never jc um and you know what also growing up um I kind of had this naive idea of what being a homosexual man was. And I thought I would have to change the way I act, the way I talk, the way I walk, the way I dress. So, you know, I, you know, I went to college um, and I did a lot of like what the straight guy would do. I don't know, like join a fraternity, like get a girlfriend. Um, and I, I was with um, my a girlfriend at the time for like four four and a half years and I thought she was the one I was gonna marry. Our our parents met. We you know we had a very loving relationship. I mean I cared for her the way that she cared for me and you know looking back at it she was kind of the best friend I needed at the time. But I learned over time I, I wasn't um I wasn't as affectionate to her as she was to me, and now I know I, I the the love that I feel for my husband now that was never there with her, but I, I cared deeply for her, um, and she helped me develop as a person. Deep down, I just I had this attraction towards like the the same gender, but uh, again, it's like there's no way I'm gay. Like that that can't be the answer. Like I'm with this amazing woman we have this future laid out for us like it was at the point where i knew that if i had proposed to her like the answer was going to be yes that like simple life is laid out for me i just need to kind of like walk the steps to get there and you know i i graduated college and i started you know working and we kept going in with our relationship and um random tendencies that like I, there would be an like i'll give you an example like it, it was when the first thor movie came out so hey. i guess it's like what put <laughs> chris, chris hemsworth on the map um <laughs> and i think like my we were just, like i was just like having dinner with um with my girlfriend and i think she was just trying to get a rise out of me to see how i would react and she would be like Hey, that new Thor came out. 
Chris Hemsworth, right? <laughs> like or something like <laughs> like that that Chris Hemsworth, what do you think? And I think she was just like trying to annoy me. And I was just and and to her I was like whatever, like whatever. That guy, whatever. Like he's he's fine, I guess. But in my mind, <laughs> I was like, ooh, He's fine. Yeah, like, are you gonna say fine? he's hot? <laughs> no, I would have been. Yeah, to her, I was just like, and I know you're just trying to annoy me. He's fine, whatever. But in my mind, I was like, mm, yes, <laughs> you and I have the same taste. <laughs> um, wow. All, kid, all kidding aside, um, there were just little things like that that just made me think, like, oh, I don't know, like maybe, maybe every guy has some sort of like curiosity like you're attracted to you're supposed to be attracted to a woman but then i don't know maybe part of you is kind of wondering like how it is to be with with a guy but i never like ever would like ask any of my straight friends that you know i had mostly straight friends at the time and i would be like are you thinking of dudes too? <laughs> Ask those hot football players. <laughs> so, a bunch of Chris Hemsworth running around. <laughs> so that's just like me in my head, like okay, like I would never, you know, it's probably just something that's like lingering in my head, but like I have to put that away because again, I'm a straight guy, I have a girlfriend, and then you know I started working for this company right out of college, and I met this uh, girl. Her name is Lena. She to this day she's like one of my bestest friends. She is like this Sudanese, like I don't give a you know, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm all about, no fear. If if this is what you think you you want to do with your life, go for it. Don't don't doubt it. She is just very like fearless and she inspired me and in a way that really made me think like I have to figure this out. Like I need to know what what this means all these like little signs that were telling me like maybe i could be gay maybe like maybe maybe you're this maybe you're that like i just had to start thinking like okay i need to start figuring out who i really am and like what i really want to do with my life because this whole time that i've been with my girlfriend i've just been making this life decisions based on like what will benefit like us as a couple I never thought like, no, I need to step back and really like figure out who I am um, and, and who I want to be. That rabbit hole took me to going with Lena to like a gay bar for the first time <laughs> and listening to like the best music ever. I'm like, Whitney is speaking to me when she says, <laughs> I want to dance with somebody, like all the things like it's just that's that's one part of it that just like started to like sink in and i don't have to change the way i talk the way i i speak like the way i talk i walk i'm just being me i've this is me like this is as i'm getting like it's becoming real like the person i'm supposed to be and it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like the opposite where now it's like no I, i'm not running away from the person like that straight persona I've been hanging on to, like I'm actually f becoming more real. Mm. You know, I, I didn't have any gay friends. I, I, I joined meetup, like you guys know the app. Um, um, and there's this 20 somethings New York city group that meets at the LGBT center, um, like once a week. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's going to, you get in a circle and you kind of talk about your story so I started doing that. I started volunteering with the group, um, kind of organizing different <laughs> events where gay guys recently came out, um, would just share their stories. And I'm like, it's I'm meeting more people who are going through that same journey, which made me feel better about like me in the journey that I'm going through. But I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm not the only one um, who's who's having these like questioning questioning things uh, of trying to figure out who I am and then yeah just Lena just continued to encourage me 
to like really find out more about about myself um and and that was the time i'm like okay um i, I can't i'm i'm questioning so many things about myself this girl my my girlfriend like she i don't deserve her her kindness her her love her her everything like i need to let her go so i, I broke up with her it was very tough because we knew that we would that's we would have to, we would be parting ways is just too much also i was the second guy that she was with who came out so i felt oh, like no. like i don't want you to think like you turned me oh like, see. <laughs> wow i just like um i i need to figure this out on my own it's very scary but i what i know is that i am not the person for you and and she's a great um, she's a great girl. I knew she would find someone. She's happily married now with someone, which I'm really happy with. The next thing was like, I wanted to, I had to tell my mom, I'm a mama's boy. And she kind of built this whole life about like, you know, like bringing us to the U S and like giving me a good future and taking, taking us away from like a hard life that I would have had back home. So she, I didn't want to disappoint her. I I I did all these things, go to college, go to work, you know, get a good job all to like make her proud and like this was this was kind of like a big thing that I I just didn't know how to approach it with telling her. So I like wrote down this whole speech about all I wanted to do in my life was to make her proud and this was I was a you know, I'm afraid to disappoint her and all these things. And so I went to our family house and met with her and, and sat her down. I, I, I wrote it like on a piece of paper, what I was going to say. And, and she just, before I started talking, she like just pulled the paper and she was like, I know what you're going to tell me. Mm-hmm. And, and I want you to know, like, it's okay. I've known since you were young and, and that was when that, that weight that I had on me, just, it, it all just like fell because, um, she's known, she's known since I was young. She said, I, I would dress up like as a girl. Like, and I was like, I don't even remember. I was probably like one or two, she said. And I would just, I would I would cry a lot, she said. Like, just whenever you would get frustrated, you would just like sit and cry. And even now, I like, I cry over the littlest things. Um, but but she, she said, I just, I just knew. Um, but I would never ask you. I would, you know, I would you needed that time to figure to get there and i she, she was like i i would never ask you like if 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 that's what it is um i would you know i needed you to go through all of that to come to me eventually and tell me that you finally find found that answer mm-hmm. and um and that was like wow i like i thought this big task that i had to like explain to her who who i am and and what i'm trying to do and about finding myself it like she already knew um so i didn't need to say much the morning after i i stayed at my family house that night um the morning after she i, I went to her room and she was crying and i was like oh no like you know what can let's talk like is is everything okay and she was like it will be i'm crying because from what i know of of people of gay people i have a feeling you're gonna have a very hard life and i am scared for you so you need to find your you need to find your community mm. and that's why that's why 
to this day, I'm very heavy on community because I think for a lot of us that are looking for a home, you really are kind of starting over um, because you're looking for people you can connect with who understand who you are. You're so lost in the beginning. Like once you figure out who you are, now it's like now what? Um, are are my are my current friends gonna accept me, or am I gonna have to find new people that I'm gonna get? It's it's like this big thing, and that you just don't know what's you know. For a lot of gay, I mean, for me, I never wanted like coming out. I I don't want people to treat me differently because I'm gay. I think that's like a big misunderstanding. Is like because I'm gay, you have to treat me like you know, special treatment, like you have to, you know, know like what a gay person would want the most is for is to just be treated like everybody else. Like, it's not a big deal to be gay. Like, it's just one aspect of your life that you realize at some point, or maybe you don't realize. But I didn't want anything to change with any of my friendship. I, and I'm very, to like what Roscoe was saying before, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, a, it's very fortunate to have a, a positive coming out story because um, not everyone gets to have that, you know, being part of that LGBT center and hearing other people's stories, like people have gotten kicked out of their homes um, because, because their parents are so tied to their beliefs and their religion that they, they ultimately give up their children. like push them out of their homes uh, to, to, you know, to like figure out, figure that out without their help. And it's like, as you know, you're supposed to love your family unconditionally and no matter who they are. And they're finally figuring out who they are. And, 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 you know, I, I just have to be very grateful that that was my experience, but, I have to always be mindful too that not everyone gets to have that. So that that's why I'm heavy on community because that's where you find your tribe, your family, your your chosen family, and and you're providing someone a home that that they might have lost. And and to me that that you know finding my community. Um, you know, and then tied to like my love of the outdoors and, and being part of this organization just kind of ties it in for me and, and, you know, helps me be like, be who I am. Um, and hopefully that, that has the same meaning to a lot of other people. And now I'm gay as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Have a husband. All the things. We need to discuss this whole uh, giving me heck about my drag career, JC. You've been doing it years before I was. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds good. It's on. <laughs> I just wondered if there's any pictures of that. Oh, my God. No, I don't think the look is. on his face says yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> that side I told it all right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Justin. You may have a you may have another one on your hands. See where you have to do a whole show out there. Come on, JC. Hey, let's go. Special entertainment okay. outdoor fest 2024. <laughs> right. We can turn it into a fundraiser for LGBT outdoors. Let's do it. Track that's my story. Anyway, that's awesome. I love Thanks that. for sharing that. That's awesome. I've heard it before, but it's I I love hearing it again, and I think it's I think it's cool. Like when your mom just takes the paper away from you, because then it's like, well, I don't know. I guess you could go two ways because it could be like kind of relieved. Or like, oh, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> it's, it, it's JC and Mallory both. Like the the vision that I, I got in my head was like, you just popped my balloon. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, yeah. 
Oh, and last last comment is every single time um, Chris Hemsworth comes out with a new Thor movie, <laughs> that's all I can think about. <laughs> it just reinforces, like, my gayness every single <laughs> Thor movie that comes out. <laughs> uh, Chris Hemsworth be- helped me become even more real. <laughs> <laughs> what, he's, what he's not telling you is that there's pictures hidden in the room with Chris Hemsworth, like, all over. No. <laughs> is that a Chris Hemsworth poster behind you on the wall? Look, he's got it on it's this green saver as well. I just saw it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's awesome. Well thanks for sharing, JC. Yeah. Thank you. Patrick, you're the last one. I am the last one. Um, first, I want to say I love you guys very, very much. Justin, my husband, I love you more. Um, and, and thank y'all for sharing. Like, more? So, what was that? Everybody else. I was like, what, I, what I shared different than... Uh, That's just rude. I, was like, you, I no. thought you meant that you heard... You, you love us all equally, Patrick. I mean, I just... <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought you were just saying that you loved me more after hearing my story, and I was like, "You already knew my story." No. Like, oh, let me just... <laughs> oh goodness! But like, th- there's so many like uh, similarities in all four of your stories that that l- line up with mine. Um, but yeah, I'll start and kind of get through this. Um, so really, I kind of started figuring things out when I was about 16 in high school. Um, very, very, very awkward time. Um, I had dated, uh, a girl for about three months and dated a different girl for about five months. And the majority of my life, that was, uh, the longest I had dated anybody five months, like period. Um, and I mean, you were only 16. Well, no, but I mean, up until I was 30 something, like the longest I had dated anybody was five months. Um, So it just, you know, high school is awkward anyway, but uh, to be sort of internally coming out and trying to figure things out, um, like crazy weird, totally throws you off balance. And I had written an email to a good friend of mine named Tiffany and I came out. I was like, I think I'm gay. And she was super cool. Very, very supportive. Yay, Tiffany. Thank you. And I actually talked to her on Facebook maybe a couple of months ago, telling her that story that like she was number one. Um, however, with that email, um, my dad had found it on the computer. And he printed it out. And showed it to my mom and they sat on it for about two weeks. Um, You know, I I didn't know this at the time, but it it was about a two week time and they did their research and they read a book called homosexual no more, which advocates snapping yourself (laughs) with, uh, with a rubber band on your wrist. If you have air quote impure thoughts and we're all watching well, my mom, my dad, and I uh, were watching TV, uh, I think Friends, maybe. And as soon as the episode was over, they turned off the TV. And my dad sort of like quickly walked into their room and he came out and he sort of threw this folded up piece of paper at me. And I opened it up and it was a letter I had written to Tiffany. And like my heart just sank. I was like, oh, crap. I'm in trouble because I, I had debated, like I, I didn't know what was going to happen with them. Realistically, if I had made the choice to come out to them, I probably would have had bags packed. Um, it, it's, it grew up in a, a churchy family, um, but pretty conservative. And I, I, I just, I wasn't prepared and so I go, we, we talked about it. I backpedaled and I was like, I don't know. It's probably a phase. I just wanted to be anywhere but there. I didn't want to talk about it. Um, they took me to a counselor uh, way out in the middle of nowhere. Kid you not, log cabin. 
The guy was probably about six foot six. There were antlers all over the walls and he had an eye patch, like pure, <laughs> like testosterone machismo, like, you know, the most quintessential manly man you can think of in like a characteristic sort of way. Um, anyhow, he starts, uh, this is the first time I had like directly experienced it, but like weaponizing scripture, Bible verses. And I had been a youth group leader at my church and like, I, I wasn't a biblical scholar by any stretch of the imagination, but I knew enough to kind of, uh, spar w- with him. Um, uh, Anyway, that was a horribly failed experiment. And um, one night I was having a conversation with my mom because I I had withdrawn, like even more so um, than I had been just very, very uh, isolated school, work, home, sleep, like that's it. And she came and talked to me and I was like, I'm not going back. Like, I'm not going back to counseling if you have the intention of changing me. Uh, which is very, very bold for like a 16 year old to, to say to their mom um, and, and very, very scary. But that was like the first brave thing that I ever did. Um, we ended up going to another counselor in a uh, professional setting uh, <laughs> as one should. I, I recommend it. And the counselor basically said, hey, there's nothing wrong with him. I can help him kind of process all of his feelings and his frustration toward you guys, but it's not a disease. There's nothing wrong with him. And so like I stayed and and went to counseling for, for quite a while. Um, I got connected with uh, hatch or the Houston area teen coalition of homosexuals based out of Houston. Uh, if that wasn't obvious and it, that was basically a queer youth group where it, it was moderated by adults, but you go and you talk about your week and just kind of share and be among other people in, in a safe environment. And I like, met some really cool people there. I came home from one of those meetings and my parents were gone and they left a note saying that they went to a PFLAG meeting. If you're not familiar with PFLAG, it stands for Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. And to my knowledge, they only went to one meeting. And they came home and they told me about the meeting. They said that there was roughly you know, a 40-year-old woman there who was crying her eyes out because her parents wouldn't accept her. And I, I wish to God I could meet that woman uh, because whatever she said was what my parents needed to hear because that kind of initiated a change in, in how they see, uh, you know, their gay son and and what it potentially means to be gay. Now keep in mind, this is 1996. Um, as Roscoe kind of touched on earlier, this was at, at the, the tail end of like the extreme height of the AIDS HIV crisis. Um, and obviously, like a, a lot of stigma, a lot of misinformation, you know, oh, my son's gay. He's going to die of AIDS really soon, you know. And, and, and so th- that that's just what was understood to be true at the time. And, um, you know, fast forward several years later, like I'm trying to sort of figure out where I fit in, uh, you know, as a gay man in on this planet earth um a lot of my exposure i kid you not still in high school um i would watch shows like jerry uh jerry springer and uh, jenny jones and, and whatever <laughs> no like not jerry you, you laugh but like it's just so i could see other gay people like Ooh. The, like that, that's how like sick and twisted and kind of you know, the lack of representation was, you know, like that, that's, that's the only place I could find it. Um, I ended up going to prom with a friend. Uh, we, we were just friends. She, she was dating a guy who had moved off to college. And um, so th- there wasn't anything r- romantic there. And like, I k- kind of 
you know, gives away the punchline ahead of time. But um, I came out to her on prom night um, and like, she was super, super cool. Um, and I, like, I love her dearly. Um, her name's Amanda. She went by Mandy in high school. Uh, she's amazing. Stick around. There's more to this story, but g- going back to my parents, uh, it beef, it, it was rough. Like it was really, really rough. Um, but now as an adult, I can look back and understand that from their perspective, they were doing what their job is. They were doing their job, which is to love me, to protect me. Um, it, it may have been misguided. It may have been misinformed, but I still see it as them doing their job. And, and I'm grateful that I can see it like that. As far as, you know, my quote unquote tells, um, I do remember dancing around in my room to Andrew Lloyd Webber's Starlight Express when I was younger. Um, a, a great one. I've always loved theater. I have almost always worked in theater um, and, and live entertainment, which is generally a more accepting progressive community. But, um, you know, jump forward. I met Justin seven years later, we got married. Um, my parents were there. That was, they were amazing. My brother was there. He was one of my best, he was my best man. But my, uh, maid of honor was my prom date from high school. Like she, she's amazing. Um, the whole wedding was amazing. I never in my life when I came out expected to, um, uh, be able to legally marry who I wanted to. Like I, I, I have a crazy imagination, you know, theater and all sorts of ooh, <laughs> bonkers stuff, but that never even blipped on my radar as a possibility. Um, so like times change, things do get better. Um, I am so hopelessly in love with my husband and, Kind of what some of y'all said, like, I did get the happy ending. Uh, I am so ridiculously fortunate. My parents love Justin as their own son um, and are unashamed about it. Like, there's there's no reservation. They adore him. And um, it it took them a while to get there uh, with, with being, you know, open. Um, but just seeing how happy Justin makes me, uh, I think like really, really, really solidified the deal. So, um, you know, I've had, you know, I've had a really good, good life, good experience. Uh, I get that that's not, not always the case. Um, and also you are not required to come out. Um, I think coming out is very much uh, a privilege and it's also timely and it's based on your situation. If you're not ready, if it is unsafe, um, take your time, you know, don't rush it. You know, you do you, if you're having a rough time, and you don't want to stick around on this planet anymore. Uh, there's people you can talk to. Um, you can dial 988, which is the National Suicide Hotline. Uh, there's people there who will talk to you 24-7, 365. Um, like you, you're needed on this planet. You're wanted. And uh, in spite of everything that you might be facing right now uh, that sucks and is hard, um, know that that is only temporary and that, you know, you got to stick around to see the upswing and um, it's worth it. So please stick around. We want you here. Yes. And fun fact, like Patrick mentioned, his uh, high school prom date was his maid of honor. My high school prom date was my maid of honor. <laughs> so that was fun. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, Laura. Yeah. Yes. So that's fine. So Patrick, what I've learned from this whole thing is that 
we can't be trusted with computers ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes when you said that i was like oh my gosh that's my story that is too funny that we both had these conversations <laughs> on <Yeah>. a computer <laughs> oh my gosh well it, it was new technology at the time and like uh, i was like uh, it was easier to type it out than it would be to say it in person you know right but, like it, even though i trusted her and, and, and still do it, it was just, it allowed me to dip my pinky toe in um, with no fear of retribution or consequence. And um, little did I know, because <laughs> I, I don't know how or when or if I would have ever come out to my parents, you know? And, and so I, I'm grateful that, you know, I didn't have to choose uh, but again, it all worked out really, really well for me. And, 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 and I don't take that for granted. And you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Justin? <laughs> uh, Always got to make it about him. Always got to make it about him. No, just his parents are amazing. If you all ever get to meet them, like, you see what I mean. But That was really yeah. sweet. They sent you a card. I was like, oh. I, saw I know. Oh. I know. They always do. For my birthday, they always send me a card. Um, so, yeah, they're sweet. Hmm. Well, that's our stories. That was fun, everyone. It was. Yeah, that was good. Thanks for sharing, everyone. A little good. bit of a yeah. e- emotional roller coaster there, but uh, but it was good. I um, I really hope that everybody that's listening to this. Um, even though this is a long episode, um, you know, we're all on different journeys and different paths. And I do know that there are people that listen to our podcast that aren't out. And obviously there are people that are out and everywhere in between. Um, and we all have different and unique stories, but that's, it's kind of what makes our community really cool. I think is so we can all be on these different paths, but we can still relate to each other at the same time with, yeah with the journey of uh, being not straight (laughs) wherever you fall in the rainbow. Um, So, yeah. Um, Anybody have anything they want to throw out there before we wrap it all up? I just want to reiterate something that, that uh, Patrick said, you know, towards the end of his uh, story and just, you know, I think there are, there's so many of us that are not ready to come out. We're afraid of coming out we're not in safe situations to be able to come out or we have come out and it's just tough. And, you know, again, uh, it gets better y'all like hang in there. It no, it's not. And it doesn't seem like it, but it will get better. You will get through it. And there's so many resources out there to support you. Mm -hmm. Um, including this whole group of people that are on this podcast right now. So, um, you know, reach out, connect, talk to somebody because there is help out there. There is support for you. Absolutely. Definitely. I was just going to also mention to kind of go along with that, that uh, the Trevor project is a great yes. resource for anybody that is um, maybe struggling with coming out or needing somebody to talk to as well. So um, uh, feel free to reach out to them as well. If you need to connect or need some resources, cause that's a great one. All right, then. Well, listeners, we're glad that you stuck around through this. We hope that you enjoyed it and got to know um, our board for LGBT Outdoors a little bit better through this. Um, And uh, yeah, be sure to check out our website. Go to LGBT Outdoors, check out events, see what's going on in your area. Um, We are working on planning and hopefully within the next month or so, we'll have more details about LGBT Outdoor Fest 2024. Um, we're always yep, looking yep. for new ambassadors as yeah. well to join us. And, uh, you know, okay, I'm going to just throw this out there too. Um, because I'm doing this thing by the time this <laughs> airs, my birthday will be over, but my birthday is October 11th. And, Ooh, uh, which I posted also on coming out day. It's just also coming out day. Um, so come out for my birthday. No, I'm kidding. Um, 
<laughs> Get all, not about you. Not about you. <laughs> it's not about me. It is very freeing to come out, though, but it is everybody's <laughs> own journey. No, but what I was going to say was I posted already on my uh, Facebook that I wanted to try to get um, 20 new Patreon followers for my birthday. And so I uh, posted that and was amazed by the response that we already got. And I think we're going to go over that. And so even though my birthday is over, if you would still like to help with our mission and join our Patreon um, you can go to patreon.com backslash LGBT outdoors and join that uh, for as little as five bucks a month and you get some fun perks out of it. So head over there and check that out as well. Um, and until next time, get out there. Thank you again for joining us this week. If you have a campfire conversation story you would like to share, please email it to us at info at LGBT outdoors.com. Follow us on Instagram at LGBT Outdoors and join the community at facebook.com slash groups slash LGBT Outdoors. Become a partner by joining our Patreon where you'll gain access to monthly bonus stories and exclusive content. For more information on today's episode, check out the show notes. For information about LGBT Outdoors, LGBT Outdoor Fest, local chapters, or to sign up for our newsletter, visit lgbtoutdoors.com. And if you're enjoying the show, please rate, review, and follow wherever you listen to podcasts.